Hey YouTube, we're back with another exciting game of Axis and Allies 1940 Global. Um, uh, this is of course a, another lockdown edition uh, game that I will be doing recap videos of. Um, and this is just a, this is just an introduction. So what you're seeing here is the out of box uh, setup. Uh, once again, this is on uh, Sired Blood's um, out of box map as it currently is, and um, uh, but otherwise this is this is the out of box uh, setup with a slight addition that I do uh, f for adding a little bit of uh, presence of the Dutch in here. But besides that, uh, this is in this is entirely out of box, um, and uh, uh, once again my friend Rick and I will be playing, but this time. We're gonna try and add another person and uh, see if we can, if having you know three people over the phone at the same time is makes it is is still as doable. So his friend his his uh, uh, cousin Mike will be joining as well, um, and we're gonna change up things a little bit from last time. And uh, this time I will be the Axis, and uh, Rick and Mike will be the Allies. Um, I think uh, Rick will be Russia, and as well as. Um, uh, I think it was Anzac, he said, in China, and uh, Mike and Rick will actually be splitting the UK, so he'll be taking the UK over here, Mike will be the UK over there, as well as France, and Mike will also be the US. And so that means me, that leaves me with Japan, Italy, and Germany. Um, so yeah, mostly doing like a quick, just an introduction, um, we're not even, I'm, I have this set up already, uh, we're not playing till tomorrow night. Um, uh, and we'll see what we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I'm gonna prep since uh, I'm going first. But I'm I'm doing this video mostly just as a, um, a, a, a to serve two functions. One, just to uh, uh, announce a, a announce the the new game, uh, and B, um, I've had a I've I've been sharing this not with not just with friends who play also play this game, but I've been sharing it with other friends who don't play this game. And and I have had a few who had a had a few questions and uh, you know it's a lot of information uh, with this game to throw out a person and stuff so I try to be as quick as possible because a lot of these videos people make online are they, they just they just uh, dilly daddle and you know they, they get going and sure enough there's a 45 minute video or something and so I want to make them concise and uh, things you know concise and quick and you know I don't want to waste your time too much and you know so um, but but with this video, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a different, a little bit of a different thing. Um, I'm gonna um, just you know obviously I'm introducing this video, and I am uh, just gonna go over uh, what the game's all about yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize Axis and Allies as quickly as I can, as quickly as I can. Uh, let, let's see, man, 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 how how does one do that? <laughs> um, it's a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot, but it but it really isn't that bad. Um, but uh, yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, this Axis and Allies is essentially a World War II um, massive combination of um, risk and uh, chess. That's how I would put it. Um, but risk is overly simple, uh, and thinking you know, th you know risk in, in chess. All, in risk, all the pieces are all the same. In, ch in chess, you know, you, all your you, each different piece has a different ability at a different way it moves, uh, you know, uh, a different amount of spaces it can move, things like that. So apply that to all these different types of pieces. And and then if you, uh, you know, just think about it logically, if you have any kind of, you know, World War II knowledge, not, not even a background, I'm not asking you to be a professor, but, but you know, just if you know anything about the pieces, you know, it, it, it makes sense as to what they, what they do, you know, so it makes sense. Transport, obviously transports, and infantry, obviously, Attacks a tank is obviously more powerful, etc., etc., etc. So, with that in mind, with 1940, and and again, uh, or not again, but uh, just to throw this out here, this is the this is the most complex version of Axis and Allies, by far. Um, there's stuff beyond this, like global war, but we're not. I'm not going to get into that. That's not what this channel is about right now. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, with this game, we it, we have this many uh nine nations and uh, this is this what well, this is this is uh, my homemade uh, turn tracker it's actually a painter's stick with some black moleskin and some black tape 
uh, wrapped around it, and then I just uh, took these old roundels and uh, double-sided, used some double-sided tape that I use and attached them uh, to this. You know, and you can, you know, just move it around the board if you need to. If you need to, if if, if the Indian Ocean here is in use, you can uh, very easily add it over here, and then use it. Use a twelve-sided die to, you know, keep track of like, okay, it's China turn two. You know, China's turn on round round two. I mean, so anyway, that's what that is. Uh, and then right here, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, this is the turn sequence, right? Okay, so each person's turn Let me start thing. That's the turn order and in each nation's turn. This is what they do We are going to play with this optional uh, research and development um, But but so that's optional, but regardless um, This is the the turn order of what uh, when when it's your turn to play a country This is what you do in this order. So first you would repair uh, any facilities or ships you would purchase new units with the money that you earn or start you know start off with and uh you do your combat movement you uh scramble defending air units if if need be uh the the, the opposition does and then you uh <clears throat> resolve combat which includes rolling dice and i have these combat um these uh combat dice or hit dice rather. so they all have different amounts of damage on them. Rather than rolling rather than rolling standard dice, this helps speed up the battle a little bit. So you can just you know throw everything at once because different units have different types of uh different types of uh damage ability. So or damage value, uh, attack value, sorry, attack value. Uh so this is this is black is one, green is two. These are young grasshoppers dice by the way. Green is uh, two uh, two or less, uh, blue is three or less, and red is four or less. Um, so you roll those, roll, roll dice back and forth until a, a satisfactory battle or a retreat. And uh, uh, when you buy your units, this is the unit, here's the unit profiles right here. And again, let me back up to this real quick. Let me finish this card first. So we, we, you resolve your combat and all the stuff there and that goes with that. Um, and then you do your non-combat movement, which means you land your you land any of your planes, any of your planes that you engaged in combat, they have to land in a territory that you previously owned. So they all have, uh, you have to keep their non-combat movement in mind. Uh, then you take the units that you bought at the beginning of the turn, you place them, which you would have to place them at uh, an industrial complex. Here's a minor industrial com here's a minor industrial complex right here, and there's a major complex right there, you know, for example. <clears throat> and then uh, you collect your income and uh, conduct convoy disruptions if need be. So if you if you forget, you know, there's a reference. Unit profiles as to what units you buy, and and go go ahead and, and just uh, I'm not going to go over every single unit, but if you want to pause this. I'll just go over it real, t real quick. Here's all different types of units you can buy. Here is how much they cost. Here is the uh, movement ability, how much they move if they move. Like bases don't move, you know, they're buildings. But like here in infantry, moves one. And then this is the attack value and the defense value. So you have different advantages and disadvantages. And with, uh, with a combination, like with chess, you know, you have different uh, uh, ways to attack each other and things like that. Um, and some things have different, you know, uses, and you have to take that into consideration. And the types of units you have together, uh, have together, gives can give you a bonus. So here is your uh, combined arms from out of box. It's this, and go ahead and pause this. So I don't want to take too long with this video. But pause it if you want to take a look over it. You know, so you, you know, you, you have to get familiar with all these kind of units and uh, wage war against uh, hopefully a friend. <laughs> you know. And uh, the nice thing about this, as opposed to risk, is in risk, you know, you can backstab people, and people get kind of butthurt about that. And um, in this game, you can't do that. And al an al alliance is an alliance, you know. So that's kind of uh, one of the things I kind of liked about it, because in risk, or someone always in a game of risk, someone always ends up a sore loser, you know, or somebody always gets upset because they get crushed, or somebody turned on them, or you know, the random setup and stuff, you know. But like chess, you know, this always starts, ideally, always starts the same way. 
you know, there's, there's, a, there's an initial setup. It's not the randomness of risk. Um, but anyway, yeah, so um, these are all the different countries. Germany, Soviet Union, Japan, America, China, the UK, um, Italy, Anzac, which is Australia and New Zealand, and then we got France. France is not, not going to do too much in this game, but you'll, you'll see. Um, and uh, uh, so yeah, it's oh, pretty much it's a historically accurate setup, more or less, to some degree or another, but. Um, what you do with that is up to uh, what you where you go with that uh, beyond that setup is up to you. So it's not going to be exact. Every game you play is not going to be exactly the same, especially with this many options, which makes it all the more interesting, I think. And uh, I'm just seeing all these different kind of pieces on the board at the same time. You know, the whole the whole game kind of comes alive, and you know, it's it's cool. It's cool. I've also taken uh, uh, a little bit of a hobby approach to it, and actually magnetized all of my pieces. Yeah, so all or not all my pieces, but all my planes. And all my aircraft carriers here. See? Yeah. Oh, fudge, but yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah, see? Yeah. Of course I go when I go to show it off it falls off. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which that that, that that's a uh, you know, not a not a standard thing. You have to customize that yourself. But um, but the customization that a lot of people do with this game is also what kind of makes it funny. You see all these different ideas. There's so many different things people people come up with different ideas for things and and just seeing what people do with this game, what ideas other people bring to the board, bring to uh, the board their board, how they how they make their their board theirs. I think it's very cool, you know, it's very, it goes back to when I was a kid I made a lot of uh, um, model tanks and planes and things like that, so kind of, you know, scratches that itch a little bit, you know. Um, I also played the original version of this game years ago when I was a kid in like junior high and such and kind of got back into it a few years ago when, uh, uh, when I realized just how many more versions had been released and, you know, kind of got me interested in it as I got back into board games and things like that. So, Oh, going up here, uh, you may remember, if you watched my last previous game, uh, you may remember the Emperor. Um, yeah, I have the Emperor on this side of the board. And introducing here, I have the uh, Tequila Death's Head on that side of the board uh, to represent Germany right there. So, let's see. And then, oh yeah, here's my uh, Graveyard Bowl. Uh, my, again, uh, my friend P uh, goes by PhD Angel came up with this little suggestion and it's just again a quick way to uh, speed up uh, playing a game and things like that um, and just toss stuff in there and not have to think about it and just get on with the game and get on with your life um, uh, what is, oh, so, oh yeah and then over here over here these are fuel gauge markers these are com my, my combat markers these are my uh, um, non-combat markers that I have since we're playing like this where I, it allows since we're playing like this over phone calls over speaker phone calls um, that allows me to completely plan out everything I'm, I can possibly do so it makes the phone calls quicker um, it uh, makes my decision making more easy it prevents me from forgetting something so when you're when you have when you're playing like this with you when you have this whole table to yourself you can really you can spend as much time as you want planning and you can get meticulous and uh you know this game is really about like i got i don't have to just have, you don't have to just plan ahead for the, your current turn you got to plan it like three turns ahead you have to have an A game as to what you're going to do. So, I'm using these purple chips here that I got as a non -com signify non-combat movement of pieces, and these blue chips here I'm using to signify um, non-combat uh, landing of uh, aircraft that have engaged in combat. All right, and then um, this is damage for battleships. This is your uh, fuel gauge markers for how much uh, fuel a plane will have left over after it's attacked and how many spaces it can go basically and then uh, these ones which will I might use these uh, these I design I, I glued these two types together 
and the, the idea of these chips of these combat markers is that if I was like say Japan because Japan and I am in this game but if I, I would be using these if I was playing with a actual person at the same time but the basic idea of that is um, you know with Japan especially if you the longer you wait especially and the more ships you have on the board to uh, engage combat with everybody and it's a little hard to keep track of like how oh did this did this ship engage in combat did this ship engage in combat because you got the combat movement your non-combat movement so to keep things straight if I want to have a something attack like some say say they attack Hawaii you know say they attack Hawaii all right or 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 no no let's, that that's pretty notice, noticeable let's say they attack over here somewhere right and uh, we attack they attack here and I got all these other ships over here or I have maybe I have ships in the sea zone already but I don't want to attack with them right so just to distinguish it the combat happens and then I flip this over and I flip this over basically to show basically to show you know the combat ha combat has been has occurred blood has been shed here right so I know this guy has has fought in combat he, I can't move him but if I have something else over here I can move him like like this transport for example this transport was in that zone for some reason, I can move him, you know? That's the idea. That's the idea with that. Whether I use those or not, we'll see, but um, I don't think I'll have to use them, but maybe I'll still just use them as combat markers, but if you see them, that's what they're for. Another thing with this game, uh, just to go over, uh, you have to, there's a, a political situation because this is in 1940, so to go over that real quick, what that means is not everybody's at war at the very beginning. So at the very beginning, Germany and Italy are at war with France and the UK. Russia and them are not at war yet. Um, the US is neutral. Japan is only at war with China. China is not an industrialized nation, therefore they only have infantry. This one plane, this is the only plane they can get, and if this Burma road here is open, then they can buy artillery. And then that is it. Uh, they're also, I guess, supposedly they're you know they're fighting a civil war at the same time. So that's also like within within the, the within the country, uh, off board kind of. That's just the representation of, of of China that they don't they can only buy infantry because of that. Anyway, and uh, yeah, Japan is not at war with the U.S. And uh, um, Anzac, oh Anzac is at war with Germany and Italy. Also that. There's a couple of Anzac guys over here, and uh, one over here, and everyone else is over here. Anzac isn't much, but they do what they can. Um, so yeah, basically that gives that 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 gives a, a very interesting um, gameplay because no, again, I think no game is ever really the same because of this. Because Germany has to decide when they're going to attack Russia. Japan has to decide when they're going to attack everybody. You know. Um, so by the end of Germany has to declare war on Russia, uh, by turn four and if turn f at the beginning of tur Russia's turn, which is right after them, after turn on turn four, if, if Germany hasn't declared war on them yet, then Russia can declare war on them. Uh, Russia can declare war on any of the Axis powers. Um, uh, Russia and Japan have a weird non-aggression pact because of a, a war from previous years of world, before World War II. Um, and uh, because of that, there is uh, this weird Mongolian rule that's a, uh, a little weird in comparison to everything else. Uh, backing up, there are neutral territories. Um, there's strict neutrals, there are pro-axis pro neutrals, and pro-allied neutrals. So if allied units move into pro-allied territories, they get those pieces. Axis move into pro axis, they get those pieces. Um, but they can, you know, Axis can attack pro allied territories, then that's fine. If they attack a strict neutral, that flips the, the uh, stance of all the other strict neutrals on the board, even the ones in South America, to uh, pro the other side, which means that they can go into those territories and just obtain them. Mongolia, though, is a little different. So, if Japan attacks any Russian territory along the border of Mongolia, then these 
are uh, these Mongolian troops automatically become Russian and Mongolia is worthless. So the idea is Japan doesn't really want to invade up here. They want everything else. And Japan doesn't really want everything else up there. And then up here, you know, Russia only has a couple uh, anti-aircraft and a ton of got a ton of infantry, but they can't really do much everything over here. Russia doesn't really want to deal with this. Japan doesn't really want to deal with this. That's the idea of it. And if, uh, but if Russia violates the Mongolian rule, then these six Mongolians do not get activated, and they become just simple strict neutrals. Um, yeah, that's basically. That's the Mongolian rule um, right there, as well as uh, the neutrality of uh, the other territories. Um, yeah, like I said, not a lot in South America. Brazil is pro-allies, um, but that's that's basically it down there. Um, I'm just trying to think of, uh, oh yeah, and then here, Iraq is pro-Axis, Persia is pro-allies. Um, trying to think of anything else worthwhile mentioning. I realize I'm going on 20 minutes right now, but... I think that's not bad. As in terms of a, in terms of for <laughs> explaining axis and allies as quick as I can, that's not bad. So, anyway, so yeah, that's kind of a little idea of how the game, how the game works. Again, combat, combined arms, return sequence, and your unit profiles. All right, gives you an idea. And then you know, once you, if you have never played it before, if you play it, you'll you'll get an idea. You'll get an idea. You'll catch on quick. It's a lot to look at, but it's a system. And once you learn the system, it's like oh, and then not, oh oh, I get it. Oh okay. And then once you learn that system, there's a bunch more games you can play. I have all of them except for the original, actually. The original, the not the classic version. The original, original. I do not have that. Um, that belongs in a museum, but. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so here is Global 40. Uh, stay tuned to uh, uh, how the first round goes, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Um, until then, I'm going to start planning, so uh, stay tuned.